लेकिन इंदिरा सानी वर्सेस यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया 1992 इट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट केस वी विल डिस्कस दिस केस व्हाइल वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग और व्हाइल वी विल डिस्कस गुड आफ्टरनून स्टूडेंट्स माय नेम इज विशाल एंड आई एम अ फैकल्टी ऑफ रूटस आई स्टूडेंट्स आई टेक लॉ ऑप्शनल सो इन दिस क्लास वी विल डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ राइट टू क्वालिटी अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वी विल डिस्कस स्पेसिफिक प्रोविजंस ऑफ द पार्ट्री ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सच एज दोस पर्टेनिंग टू रिजर्वेशन इन एडमिशन टू educational institutions as well as reservation in office or employment under the state in the favor of certain classes so students will discuss the brief concepts of equality and then we'll enter into specifics of article 15 clause 4 article 16 clause 4 of the indian constitution both of them article 15 clause 5 also both of them or we can say all three of them they basically provide for reservation in educational institutions as well as reservation in office under the state in the favor of certain classes so we'll discuss the concept of equality as well as three three important sections upsc in the past they have asked certain questions focused on these sections also they are basically asked what are the special provisions that are made in the favor of backward classes whether they be <coughs> socially and educationally backward or scs or scs under article 15 and 16 of the indian constitution so starting from right to equality <coughs> see students right to equality or the concept of right to equality is provided under article 14 this article provides or it constitutes of it constitutes two components one is equality before law and second component is equal protection of law so we'll discuss what does equality before law means what does equal protection of law means then after understanding these basic concepts we'll move on to article 15 clause 4 clause 5 and article 16 clause understanding of these basic concepts is very are very important or is very important to understand the <coughs> provision of reservation or any other special provision that are provided under various articles of the constitution See equality before law. As the name suggests, equality before law means absence of special privileges. It means basically it is a corollary to the rule of law or the doctrine of rule of law as founded by A. V. Dicey. <coughs> A. V. Dicey had said that. the rule of law constitutes of one important aspect that is absence of special privileges now what do we we mean by absence of special privileges it simply states that <clears throat> everybody is equal in the eyes of law that means nobody has any special privileges when it comes to his its treatment under the law that in turn means that everybody will be treated equally under the law irrespective of his rank or status a person might be holding a very important constitutional position a person might be having a net worth of 5000 crores a person might be a very well established businessman but but when it comes to his or her treatment under the law he will be treated equally as ordinary citizens of this country that means for example a person commits a crime a person or a peasant commits a crime and a person 
who is a well established man businessman in this country he commits a crime so now both of them will be treated equally that means both of them will be subject to same law and they will be prosecuted in the ordinary courts of the country a person holding a constitutional position <clears throat> a person holding a important constitutional position if he commits a crime he will be amenable to same law in the same or ordinary courts of the country example we have seen we have already <clears throat> seen a lot of such examples where people holding important constitutional posts such as chief ministers <clears throat> they have been if they were found <clears throat> to be violative of law they were made amenable to same law that means the same law was applicable to them and they were prosecuted or we can say they had to be prosecuted by following the same procedure of law as an ordinary person would have been that means there would be no special treatment for such people that means an ordinary person and a highest dignitary of this country is equal in front of law if anybody of them violates law or breaches law they'll be subject to same law a dignitary holding an important constitution position will not be given any special treatment there are certain exceptions as provided under article 361 in favor of the president and the governor of states <clears throat> keeping in due consideration the offices because president is the highest constitutional office in the state so keeping in consideration their or the dignity attached with their offices certain special provisions have been provided under article 361 for them in case of <coughs> initiating any criminal or civil proceedings against them so this is an exception to equality before law <coughs> secondly a more important concept is equal protection of law now the equal protection of law states that likes should be treated alike that means as <clears throat> further moving in into the concept of equality before law equal protection of law states that likes should be treated alike that means two people who are situated in similar circumstances equality states or the concept of equality states that they should be given or they should be treated equally <clears throat> from the point of view of law for example all of you are preparing for civil services right so two people having the necessary or requisite qualification they appears for the examination right so they will be same stands uh, they will be subjected to same standards of evaluation a or b both of them because they are situated in similar circumstances both of them are appearing for civil services examination so standards of evaluation would be same if the mains cut off is 1000 marks it would be same for a and same for b but in furtherance of that it says like should be treated like that means people who are not situated in similar conditions or the people who are situated in different circumstances they should not be treated alike that means it says in single expression i will try to explain that people situated in similar circumstances should be treated in similar manner and those who are not situated in similar circumstances they need not be treated in a similar manner i'll give you a very simple example you understand with the help of that example what is the concept of equality before law <clears throat> suppose there is a public university or we can say a government university and in that government university there are five floors so obviously <clears throat> for the students to move from ground floor to fifth floor there is an elevator or lift so there is a lift 
that is reserved only for the people with special abilities people who are specially able a lift is reserved from them now the people who are not specially able they basically object they say that it is a violation of equality because people who are specially able they are given special treatment a special or we can say a lift fee is reserved for them but people who are not specially able <coughs> or we can say who are not physically disabled they are not given special treatment so is it a violation of equality no the law states no because the people who are specially able they are in those circumstances that or we can say they are at a certain disadvantages position so that law states or the doctrine of equality states that they should be treated equally unequally sorry they should be treated unequally or in other words they should be given some special treatment so that despite their disadvantage they'll be able to compete with the people who are at more advantages position than them simple it's simple or we can say it's a logical thing people who are specially able they won't be able to climb five floors and go to the classes whereas people who are not specially able they are physically able so they'll be able to climb five floors so the people who are at disadvantaged position they can be given special treatment under the law so that their disadvantage should be should not become a handicap or it should not become an impediment in their overall progress and they should also be able to compete with other people on a parity <coughs> so it means the right to equality states or we can say the right to or we can doctrine of equality does not means absolute equality among all because treating everybody irrespective of their circumstances or position or condition would be a violation of equality so there is no or there cannot be a absolute equality people who are situated in some kind of disadvantageous position they should be given or the law necessitates that they should be given some special treatment so that they can over the dis- overcome the disadvantage and will be able to compete on a equal or parity basis so this is the concept of equal protection of law now in the beginning of the class i have told you that i'll be dealing with the general concept of equality as well as i'll talk about certain specific provisions <coughs> that talk about reservations in admission to educational institutions and in the matter of employment under the state so now why i have given a introduction of the concept or the doctrine of equality is because to understand because this concept of reservation sprouts from the principle of equal protection of law that means people who are socially at a disadvantaged position reasons can be any it could be historical reasons it could be some sort of political reason but the thing is the fact of the matter is certain people or certain classes or certain sections or certain group of people in our country they are at disadvantages position as compared to rest of the people so now the doctrine of equal protection of law necessitates that such people who are at disadvantages position they should be given special treatment in the form of special provisions and one of those one of that special provision is reservation that means seats would be reserved for those section because the sense dictates or the overall principle or we can say the constitutional morality dictates that people who are at disadvantages position they will not be able to compete with the rest of people and <coughs> the principle the guiding principles of the constitution that is establishing a fair and egalitarian society will not be fulfilled or achieved 
so now moving forward after understanding the concept of equal protection of law and reservations we'll start with certain specific provisions so do you have to remember general two or three things see the right of equality that are or we can say the right of equality that is enshrined under the constitution it basically is covered in article 14 till 18 but the traces of right to equality or equal treatment it can be found in the entire edifice of the constitution but in a specific manner article 14 to 18 provides for <coughs> right to equality article 14 generally talks about the concept of equality the concepts of equality before law and equal protection of law whereas under article 15 or certain clauses of article 15 specific provisions have been discussed or provided so under article 15 clause 1 it is specifically stated that states shall not discriminate on the grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth state shall not discriminate on these ground grounds religion race caste sex or place of birth. that means if state is not if state is discriminating on these grounds that means state is <coughs> not behaving in a equal manner or we can say the state is not providing equal treatment to all the section of society if start state start discriminating on the basis of religion that means it prefers one religion over another that means it would be an unequal treatment for the people belonging to other religious communities that's why article 151 specifically debars the state or prohibits the state from discriminating between its citizens on grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth in addition to this in 15 clause 3 <coughs> the constitution states the state can make special provision for women and children so now it is an exception first one is equality before law 15 clause 1 15 clause 3 is the application of doctrine of equal protection of law where it states that women can be provided with special provisions by the state because the constitution or the constitutional morality recognizes that women in this country or all over the world but the law obviously the constitution only operates or we can say it is enforceable in the territory of india so <coughs> women have been subjected to certain discrimination because of them because of that discrimination they were not able to compete with the other gender that means they are at a disadvantageous position you look at the <coughs> ratio of employment the number of males in any employment avenue or in any service is obviously quite higher than the women who are present in such service so that means women are at disadvantageous position so to bring them on parity with men a special provision has been provided under article 15 clause 3 So 151 talks about general non discrimination 153 talks about specific provision for women in the same manner article 15 clause 4 it talks about special provisions that can be made by the state in the favor of socially and educationally backward classes of citizens or sc that is the scheduled castes or scheduled tribes the state can make or nothing in this constitution or nothing in the article 15 can <coughs> prohibit the state from making special provisions in the favor of socially and these terms are very important sometimes student ask me sir do we have to memorize the entire provision do we have to memorize the entire article i keep saying you don't have to to memorize the entire article verbatim 
but you have to take out certain important components so in article 15 clause 4 we have components such as special provisions in favor of socially and educationally backward classes of citizens or s and s is an st that is scheduled caste and scheduled tribes so now the question arises what are those special provisions state is empowered or we can say state has been given an enabling provision to provide special provisions for or in the favor of socially and educationally backward classes of citizens scs and st actually <coughs> i'll give you just a background for this provision initially this provision was not in the constitution it was added by the first constitutional amendment act 1951 now what happened is ki <coughs> what is special provisions in indra sani versus union of india 1992 it is a very important case we'll discuss this case while we will be discussing or while we will discuss article 16 clause 4 in indra sani versus union of india the supreme court of india categorically stated that special provision does not only mean reservation it do covers reservation but the ambit of special provision are quite wider that means any <coughs> positive action program on the part of state in favor of socially and educationally backward classes of citizens plus scheduled caste plus scheduled tribes would be covered under article 15 clause 4 so that means the state can provide special provisions in the form of reservations plus any other special provision so if the government feels that the students belonging to sc and st communities they should be given special scholarships so that is possible that is constitutionally valid under article 15 clause 4 right so now when this constitutional amendment was enacted and clause 15 uh, article 15 clause 4 was inserted in the constitution in 1951 in 1960s the state of mysore the former state of mysore it basically passed an order that reserved 68% of seats in the favor of socially and educational backward classes scs and scs in the state educational institution so now that order was challenged and the name of the case was mr balaji versus union of india 1960 in that case the court basically analyze the <coughs> aspect or we can say the concept of reservation and court basically analyze the meaning of expression socially and educationally backward classes as well as the extent of reservation that can be given in the favor of backward classes or scheduled caste or scheduled tribes so court basically lay down or propounded certain observations or criteria in mr balaji versus union of india 1963 first of all the court said that is it is very important to define the expression socially and educationally backward classes of sikhs because <coughs> special provisions can be made in the favor of sc scheduled caste now scheduled caste and scheduled tribes they are <coughs> or the caste that are included in the category of scheduled caste or scheduled tribes they are basically provided by the list is <coughs> provided by the president under article 341 and 342 so the matter regarding them is already finalized it is already final the question was who are socially and educationally backward classes of citizens so the court while analyzing the concept of backwardness in india it stated in india because of certain historical reasons certain castes are socially backward it stated that there is a certain connection or we can say nexus between a caste of a person his educational backwardness 
and the social resultant social backwardness and all these <coughs> give result to economic backwardness so there is a nexus between a caste because historically the caste if you study the caste system in india caste is a social organ social organization people who belong to a certain caste initially the caste were made or delineated on the basis of professions so people belonging to a certain profession say a person engaged in mending shoes okay nothing against them it's a good profession okay <clears throat> so these uh, people who are uh, in, in, indulge in the profession of mending shoes they formed a separate caste likewise the people who were indulged in trading they formed a separate caste and among these caste also we had several sub caste so now what happened is ki because of this rigid caste structure people who belong to a separate caste basically followed a certain profession because of that people <coughs> who followed a certain profession or we can say certain caste who were engaged in certain menial jobs they did not get a chance to educate themselves as they did not get a chance to educate themselves they became socially backward and because of all that they became educationally backward so there is a circle one leads to another caste in india led to not now because now we have a wonderful document the constitution but historically when we did not have this <coughs> constitution or we can say the principles of constitutions were not enforceable as law people belonging to certain caste followed certain profession because of that they were <coughs> socially backward and because of that they were economically backward so it all formed a vicious cycle so the court stated that caste in india though is a social organization but it cannot be a sole determinant of backwardness social backwardness and to <coughs> become socially and educationally backward classes a caste has to be socially as well as educationally backward that means only on the ground of caste suppose now the state because <coughs> article 15 clause 4 empowers the state to make special provisions so now while <coughs> invoking article 15 clause 4 state include certain caste in the category of social and educational backward classes regarding or we can say for the purpose of article 15 clause 4 so now the court stated only caste cannot be a determinant of social and educational backwardness it has to be seen the <coughs> state should collect the data the state should <coughs> ascertain that if a certain caste is also socially backward that means it is engaging into certain professions or it is into certain <coughs> occupation and because of that it remains socially backward as compared to the people who are from other caste and because of that it is also economically poor so on all these give rise to educational backwardness so if a caste is economically backward it give rise to social and educational backwardness then only a caste can be categorized as socially and educationally backward class only on the basis of caste itself the state cannot categorize any caste as a backward class that means many factors have to be taken into account while categorizing a caste as socially and educationally backward that can be its educational backwardness educational backwardness can be determined by ascertaining the number of people from that caste in education institutes like schools so suppose if a caste has 1000 member in a state and among them only 100 are into <clears throat> secondary education that means it is educationally backward right so on the on the ground of those or taking those facts as parameters the state can categorize a certain caste as socially and educationally backward but caste alone cannot be sufficient 
to become or to be categorized as socially and educationally well apart from that the major concern about reservation was what should be the extent of reservation that means how much percentage of seats can be reserved for people belonging to backward classes because if the state give excessive reservation it is giving certain favors to backward classes but it is also taking favors from or it is also taking the right to equal opportunity from classes that are not backward so for overall development of society is it is important that backward classes should be given a certain impetus or benefit to move them upward but it does not mean to move them upward you have to drag the classes that are already advanced to a lower level so for this a balance has to be struck because right to equality the concept of equality states equality before law so to give a special provision to one caste another caste cannot be or should not be treated unequally so the question is extent of reservation so because in this case or in the impugned order the mysore government has provided 68% of reservation that court held to be too much court says if you are reserving 68% seats only for the reserved caste that means you are not providing equal opportunities to the people who are not from that caste so a balance has to be struck down court did not lay down a binding criteria but it generally said that the reservation or number of the reserved seat should be less than 50% of the total seats in a given year in a given year <coughs> So students today we have studied the concept of equality before law equal protection of law then we have studied specific concepts such as special provisions in the favor of disadvantageous groups so in this we have studied article 15 clause 3 in a very brief manner plus article clause uh, <coughs> article 15 clause 4 in the next session we will discuss a very important provision that is article 16 clause 4 and the, its ancillary provision such as article 164a and 164p so that's all for today <coughs> a very <coughs> i'll wish you best of luck for your upcoming examinations so thank you and more of such informative videos please stay tuned with lotus is